Hey, Bears fans, do you want to be on the show coming up this week? We're going to do another mailbag, so use hashtag Bears to get your questions on the show. The NFL Draft is in the books. You can ask me anything draft-related, free agency-related, whatever it is, use hashtag Bears, and I will answer as many questions on this week's mailbag. That is your chance to be on the show. Now, let's get into today's episode of Chicago Bears Now. Like I mentioned, the NFL draft is in the books, but the Bears have added several undrafted free agents up to this point, eight in total. Let's start with Artavis Pierce, the running back out of Oregon State. Looked into this kid, had almost 3,000 yards of production, uh, yards from scrimmage in his four years in Corvallis. Was a key cog in that backfield, especially this senior season. He ran a 4-4-7 at his pro day. We know how pro days go. Maybe that's a little bit inflated, but that's still pretty decent speed. I I think there's room to compete for a running back spot on this roster. 873 yards rushing last year, six yards per carry, averaged that for his four-year career, had six touchdowns as well, and is a pretty good receiving option out of the backfield. You look at the depth chart, David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen, Ryan Nall is kind of more of a fullback. That's it. So if they move Nall to fullback permanently, I think there's a decent chance that the Bears could carry another running back. So why not Pierce? I think he could have a chance to make this roster or at least the practice squad. Did you like the Bears 2020 NFL Draft Hall? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If you haven't watched my Bears Draft Grades video yet, you can check that out on the channel. I dive deeper into all seven of the Bears draft picks. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know if you liked this year's Bears Draft. And while you're doing that, why don't you get yourselves a new Bears jersey? You can order a Cole Komet jersey by going to chatsports.com slash Bears1. He hasn't officially chosen a number yet, but you can still pre-order it. And as soon as the Bears announce whatever his number is, Fanatics will send that jersey to you. You could be the first one to get a Cole Komet jersey. So go ahead and order today. Next signing here, Ahmad Wagner. Interesting uh, kid here. He started his collegiate career as a basketball player at the University of Iowa before transferring to Kentucky. Big size, 6'5", 234. He's listed as a wide receiver, but maybe he comes in and competes at tight end. Could be a big slot type of player. Averaged almost 17 yards per catch despite not getting a lot of repetitions. Keep in mind, Kentucky played Lynn Bowden at quarterback this past season due to injuries at the quarterback position. So his numbers aren't as big as maybe they could have been had they had a true healthy quarterback but you see the yards per catch at almost 17 that means big play potential had a couple of touchdowns I think he could develop into a red zone target hopefully the Bears can keep him around I like his athletic upside probably a practice squad guy at first maybe think a Rico Gathers type a guy who started at uh, as a basketball player at Baylor before uh, going to the NFL as a football player stuck around with the Dallas Cowboys for a little bit. You look at this Bears wide receiver depth chart, it's pretty packed, so I don't know if he can make it as a receiver. They did draft Darnell Mooney as well, so it's pretty deep for the Bears. But at tight end, I mean, Jimmy Graham, Cole Komet, those are for sure going to make the roster. After that, it's kind of not great. I like Demetrius Harris as a tight end three, but some teams carry four tight ends. Maybe this kid could make the roster as a tight end. Next one here, Badara Trori, the offensive lineman out of LSU. Interesting kid as well. Juco guy, transferred from ASA College in Brooklyn to LSU. Didn't play a ton. Uh, he was more of a special teams guy. Uh, started five games over the past couple of seasons, but a high character kid from what I've uh, heard and, and, and looked into out of this kid out of LSU. His chance to make the roster will be on special teams. Certainly a project. Has not played a lot, but 6'7", 320. He's got massive size. He's got some athleticism, just not a lot of playing experience at a high level. So we'll see if he's got a shot to make the Bears roster. They signed a couple of offensive linemen free agents. We'll get to the other one in just a little bit. The draft might be over, but we're not going anywhere. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that big red button. We're going to have videos almost every single day go up here on Chicago Bears. Now we'll have Q&As. Like I mentioned, use hashtag Bears and turn on notifications. You see that bell? It's right next to the subscribe button. You turn that on, you'll never miss a video. You will always be notified when our videos go up on the channel. So we greatly appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe to Chicago Bears now. 
The other offensive lineman was Dieter Eiselin out of Yale, 6'4", 3'10". I think he's got some guard tackle versatility. He's from South Africa, actually. Made his way to the States to play football for Yale. Obviously a smart kid as well. The Ivy League doesn't just let anybody into their schools. 33 career starts, veteran player. Played mostly tackle in college, but I think he could play some guard in the NFL. So the Bears added a couple offensive linemen uh, after the draft, and they drafted a couple of guys in the seventh round in Arlington Hambright and Lachavius Simmons. You had Troy and Iselin as well. I think Chicago's looking at, okay, can one of these four guys make our roster and make an impact? That is the reality of the situation because seventh-round picks are typically basically undrafted free agents. So we know the Bears need help and need some depth on this offensive line. Maybe one of these kids can hit and provide some of that for Chicago. Are you upset that the Bears didn't draft an offensive lineman with one of their second round picks? Type one for yes, type two for no. I would understand it if you were because the Bears' biggest need heading into the draft was offensive line, and it really wasn't addressed. Two seventh round picks and two undrafted free agents, that's not really helping your problem there. At best, you're getting backups there. So type one for yes, type two for no. If there's a lot of yet ones in the comment section, I will certainly understand that. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this. This uh, fired me up as well. The Bears signed Khalil Mack's younger brother, Ladarius Mack, who also comes from the University of Buffalo. Good player in his own right. Had eight sacks in 2019. Now, look, let's pump the brakes here. I'm sure a lot of you guys, oh, the Mack brothers, are they're, they're ready to storm the league together. Let's pump the brakes. He's not the athlete that Khalil is. There's a reason Khalil Mack was a top 10 pick a few years back. But I'd like to see this kid get in there and maybe make the practice squad and eventually earn his way onto the roster. Had good production as a pass rusher. Now, he's not the three-down player his older brother is. Only 24 tackles, but 11 of those were tackles for loss, and he had eight sacks. So he was able to get after the quarterback at the University of Buffalo. Also forced three fumbles. If you uh, look at their senior year side-by-side, -side, Khalil versus Darius, you can obviously see the difference. Cleo Mack had 100 tackles and almost 20 tackles for loss and more sacks. But, hey, 10 and a half sacks to 8 sacks. Ladarius is a good pass rusher in his own right. We'll see if he has a chance to stick on the roster. If nothing else, it's a fascinating story. It should be interesting, to say the least, once training camp rolls around. Who is your favorite UDFA signing so far? Go ahead and let me know. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys say Ladarius Mack, with him being Cleo Mack's younger brother. But I like uh, the Pierce kid as well out of Oregon State, Artavis Pierce, the running back. I think he has a decent shot to make this roster. Those would be my two names, but go ahead and comment your answers down below. Next one here, defensive lineman out of Duke, Trevon McSwain. A versatile player, 6'6", 285. He's got good size. I think in a 3-4 scheme, which the Bears run, he's kind of a defensive end type. Game record last year in the ACC, forced four fumbles. Probably a practice squad type of player. I highly doubt he makes the final 53. Not very bendy, not the best athlete, but he has good size and can line up inside or outside, which he did move around a little bit at Duke over his career. So we'll see if he has a chance to stick. Had four sacks last year, had seven tackles for loss, 35 tackles in total, decent run defender, and like I mentioned, the four forced fumbles as well. I like Trevon McSwain. I think his upside is limited with the uh, lack of athleticism, but played a lot at Duke, was a coach's favorite for the Blue Devils, so we'll see if he has a chance to stick maybe on the practice squad for the Bears. Want to remind you guys of our jersey deal. Go to chatsports.com slash bears1. You can be the first one to get a Cole Komet jersey and – got current Bears jerseys as well. If you want Khalil Mack, you want Mitchell Trubisky, whoever you want, Allen Robinson jerseys also, got to go to that link, chatsports.com slash Bears1. I will put it in the comments. I will put it in the description. Make it easy on you guys so you can find it easily. Another defensive lineman, LaKel London out of Western Illinois, was actually teammates with Kalen Saunders, who got drafted by the Chiefs this past year. So they know each other very well. Saunders gave him a couple of, a couple of retweets on Twitter, so that was nice to, uh, to see. I think he's kind of like McSwain, defensive end in a 3-4 scheme, not a 300-pound guy, 6'5", 280, but he's got good size. You can move him around. Had four sacks this past year for Western Illinois, ten, uh, nine and a half tackles for lost and three fumbles. So good production there. Western Illinois, like I said, plugged out Kalen Saunders last year, so obviously they're getting some players into the NFL. I don't think if was, these guys can make nose tackle, which is really the only opening on this defensive line as a reserve uh, because there's really no one behind Eddie Goldman there, but you got Hicks on one side, Nichols on the other side. Obviously, Roy Robertson Harris, who was an undrafted free agent back in 2016, he's proven that you can make this roster as a UDFA, but 
but we'll see if either of these guys have an impact for the Chicago Bears. What is the Bears' biggest need now that the NFL draft is over? I think it's very clear, right? It's offensive line. They got their second corner in Jalen Johnson. I think they can get by with what they have at safety, although I would probably jump that as my second biggest need over corner now. Uh, but I still think the Bears need help, especially at that right guard position. I guess Jermaine Ifedi might be that guy. That does not excite me very much. We will see if the Bears address that in free agency. Another signing here was Rashad Smith, the linebacker out of Florida Atlantic. Very productive, 96 tackles, over 300 tackles in his career. But as you guys know, tackles, kind of an empty stat these days. A lot of those can be way downfield. But pretty good player, good coverage skills, six interceptions over the past two seasons as well for Florida Atlantic. So he's got a little bit of upside. If he can offer some special teams value, maybe he has a chance to stick. But the problem with uh, any front seven player coming onto the Bears is – not a lot of opportunities because that front seven is very, very loaded for Chicago. 11 and a half tackles for losses past year, a couple of picks, four interceptions back in 2018. Also showed some pass rushing ability in 2017 when he had six sacks, but he has been more of an inside linebacker the past couple of seasons for Florida Atlantic. So grade the Bears UDFA signings, A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and let me know. Obviously, we don't know a ton about these kids yet. We'll hear more and more once they get onto the field, whenever that is, hopefully very, very soon. But grade it based on what we know, A, B, C, D, or F.